let's talk about some more types. Uh, so the types we've covered so far today, we have our basic uh, immutable types. We talked about numbers, ints and floats, booleans, true and false, strings, um, which are immutable, lists, which are mutable, um, and all the various operations we can perform on lists. There's a related, there's actually two related types to lists that are really close, similar syntax, um, and some dramatically different functionality. One of them is tuples, and that's kind of the next section. Um, it's 5.4 in that PDF section 5.4. And a tuple is basically just an immutable list. So lists, you can change items in a list. Tuples, you can't change items in a tuple. So you create a tuple. That's it, you've got one. And the syntax for it is a comma-separated list. And you'll notice when I type in a comma-separated list and hit Enter, it prints it out with parentheses. The parentheses are optional for declaring tuples, but you can think about the parentheses as replacing brackets. And uh, Python uses a parentheses for lots of things, so the context determines their, uh, their meaning, and parentheses are potentially confusing. The only time parentheses are required is if you want to make a, even then they're not required. If you want to make a one tuple, a trailing comma is required because there's, no, um, there's no sense what just three would mean besides the value of three. And three inside parentheses doesn't get you a tuple either. Got to have a trailing comma. Aside from that, your parentheses are optional. Your values can be whatever. And it supports similar op operations as lists. Um, but it's immutable. So why do we want immutable lists? Why aren't we happy with just lists? Any thoughts? Yeah, so there's a little bit of a sense of constants here. Um, the next data type that we talk about, uh, Dix, needs to use immutable values only as its keys. And when we have lists and we want to use lists as keys, we need to convert them to tuples. Um, tuples are return lots of places instead of lists because they're slightly more lightweight. Um, we talked at the very beginning about ID and looking at the memory usage of variables. And lists, every list is unique because it's mutable. Uh, since tuples are immutable, you can create a very large number of similar tuples and not use up very much memory because each identical tuple is actually going to end up in turn to the same memory location. So there's some performance advantages occasionally. Um, and lots of the standard uh, built-in functions return tuples. So let's look at a few of those. Uh, like lists, you can create tuples with parentheses. I wonder. Uh, you can create an empty tuple. Don't know why you do that, just like empty brackets. You can also use the built-in function tuple. And you can pass the built-in function a value to be converted to a tuple, in this case a list, and it'll return you a tuple. Um, you can use tuples to do things like variable reassignment. Anybody ever done an interview question where you have to swap the contents of variables? It's like a really basic programming kind of thing. Python lets you say just that. And the syntax implications of this swap are that on the left-hand side, we implicitly have parentheses, and this is a tuple. And on the right-hand side, we implicitly have parentheses, and this is a tuple. And Python will do tuple unpacking. There's no list unpacking. There is tuple unpacking. So tuple unpacking. If you know how many items you have in a tuple, and it's immutable, so you don't have to worry about it having changed. You can go ahead and expand those into the implicit tuple on the left-hand side of the equation. And my first, second, and third variables got filled with the first, second, and third values in the tuple. 
And from Python's perspective, it's just creating a new tuple on the left-hand side. There's an implicit tuple there. It is, but it's immutable. It uses less memory, and Python does a few special things with it. And we've already seen one tuple. Anybody remember? Um, When we wanted to loop through an array and we wanted both the index and the value, what function did we use that was built in? Somebody said enumerate. And if you uh, equals. And if you look at this expression, Implicitly, there is a tuple there, and I could, in fact, put parentheses around it. Because the enumerate function is returning a single value each time. You have to return a single value in a for, for loop. Um, but that single value is a tuple, and we can automatically unpack it. We could also do this. To prove it, I'm catching a single value and printing that single value. And that single value is a tuple with the index and the uh, value of the current position in the list. So tuple unpacking is just shorthand, expanding that tuple into two variables. Um, and it's convenient. It's mostly used in loops, but you will occasionally use it for like variable reassignment. Make sense to people? Can you keep, yes, you can keep tuples in lists. It does not. So the tuple is immutable in the sense that it is a list of variables, and it will not change which variables each position is bound to. But if one of the variables in it itself is mutable, you can still access and change that variable. You won't be able to do it directly. Actually, you could do it directly. Mm. Parentheses versus brackets. So square parentheses is always a list. And parentheses, which are optional, are a tuple. Square brackets are list. Uh, I converted a list to a tuple with a tuple function. And it accepts an iterable and makes a, creates a tuple out of it. But that's just an input function. Just like I did this list and gave it a string, that's an iterable, and it creates a list out of the individual characters of the string. And if it, as long as it knows how to iterate over uh, the object, it can create a list or tuple from it. And I just used the built-in type function, which returns you the type of the variable you pass it. Um, and when we get to Oop, we'll talk a little bit more about why you generally don't need to do that sort of thing uh, in Python. Um, Non-destructive. So pop and, ind uh, pop and insert don't work on a tuple because you can't take something out of a tuple. It's immutable. Ah. So the pop as the, as the and remove, pop. insert, I think that's everything. There's a pen. The pen won't work. Count would work. Extend does not work. In work. Index would work. Insert does not work. Pop does not work. Remove does not work. And no, reverse and sort. Uh, the well, the next data type is dictionaries. Lists and tuples are both kind of used for the same thing. There's an implicit order, and it's positionally indexed. What you care about is what position things are at. Or maybe you just care about their order. Uh, if you want something to be sorted, you might put it in a list to sort it. Uh, the next type, we also dereference, but it's a key value store. Uh, Python calls them dicts, D-I-C-T, which is short for dictionary. Other languages might call it like a hash or a hash map. Um, and the distinction syntactically here is that we're going to use curly braces. 
So square brackets are lists, parentheses are tuples, curly braces are dicks, and dicks can be created in a couple different ways. One way is the syntax we've been using, which is key value pairs, just like we created lists with just their appropriate braces and tuples with just their appropriate braces. We can create dictionaries with just their appropriate braces. Uh, some other languages, the keys don't have to be quoted. In uh, Python, both the key and value has to be quoted if they're literals, if they're string literals. And what can we do with dicks? Dicks don't support uh, the concept of positional indexing. So I get a keyer when I say x0, because there is no key 0. I could make a key 0, but it's not a position. It's just a key. You index them just like you do list with square brackets, not with curly braces. And you specify the key, it returns the value. There's obviously no slicing notation. There's no sense of order. There is no sort or reverse for dictionaries. It's just a key value store. It's a table lookup. It's a hash map lookup. Yeah, the underlying, the underlying um, implementation is a hash map. Um, we talked about in for lists to determine the presence of something. Rather than using index, you could just say if one in And the same thing is true for dicks, in, except that it's checking by default keys, not values. So it printed true the first time. It's looking at the, the keys, uh, not at the values when you say in. Um, there isn't very many convenient idioms for searching through the values of a dictionary. Dictionaries are for storing keys, and you're interested in the values of the uh, values associated with a particular key. Um, we can also create dicts with the built-in dict function. And this is just like we did with the lists. In this case, it's a um, comma-separated list of parameters. And I don't need to put quotes around my keys. So you can use the dict funct function instead. And while I like square braces for my lists, sometimes dict is less typing than curly braces for initializing dictionaries. Um, you can, despite the fact that there's no order, you can loop over dictionaries. You might want to do something on every member of a dictionary. So it still makes sense to loop over a dictionary. So you were saying that you would use these dicts for something, but only the dictionary. Yes. There's no, no convenient built-in idiom to look for a value. So the only way you could do that one would be to say, by, by doing a loop to get out of the contents. And then you were sort of matching what that contents would be right out. Well, here's the thing. So let's look at um, the built-in methods of the dict type. The first function uh, of great interest is items. And items is returning me tuples of the key and the value. Keys will return me just a list of the keys. If you really want to look and see if a value is in, you can look at values. And it gives you just a list of the values. So if you really wanted to search through the values of the dictionary, you could search through its values list. That tells you that it's there. It doesn't tell you that it has a particular key. There's no way to go from x.values back to figuring out which key corresponds. But again, in general, your, 
not so much interested in what are my values in my dict, but what are my keys. If you're really interested in uh, a list of values and searching through them, you're probably going to use a list instead. Oh yeah, so let's let's talk about that. That's a good question. Um, statements are single line statements by default, right? If I say x is equal to, and then I hit enter, I can't put five on the next line. It's a syntax error. There are some exceptions. One of the exceptions is pretty much any time there is a starting brace, curly bracket, parenthesis, square brace. So I can say x is equal to. And that's valid. Notice that's on two lines. This is valid. It's in a function call and it's surrounded by parentheses. So Python knows that I'm not uh, done specifying that function call. And you can format as you like. So as long as you're inside of some containing parentheses, curly brackets, square brackets, you can use multi-line. Um, and I said earlier that if statements don't require parentheses for the condition, one of the common uses you'll see with actual parentheses is because you've got several conditions and you need to break it up onto multiple lines, which you can't do without adding the parentheses. So if x and y and z, and you could assume that those were all really long conditionals, that's a legal statement. And the parentheses only syntactical implication there is basically to convert that whole thing into a single line statement, even though it spans multiple lines. So iterating over dictionaries. I still have a dictionary. I still do. Uh, when we iterated over lists, We got the value when I just did a simple iteration using for value in list. What am I going to get here? I get the keys. Dictionaries were interested primarily in keys. If I wanted to iterate over a dictionary and print the actual values, I'd have to dereference my dictionary inside my loop with the key that I've got. And as we've noticed, I could always do items, which returns two tuples or lists explicitly over uh, values or keys to get just the values or just the keys. But the default uh, is to iterate over keys. So let's do um, a couple things in terms of labs, and you can get these two um, new data types. Go back to your um, classmates file, and go ahead and copy it to classmates1. Save it as a new file um, so we can go back in time. We're going to have a bunch of iterations of the classmates file. It'll get more impressive gradually. If you're already fluent in some sort of uh, source control, you can go ahead and use git or bzr or whatever to revision it. But otherwise, just copy it to a new name. Um, and right now, you have a classmates file that has a list of all the first names of all the students and prints them out. In your new classmates file, go ahead and delete the uh, list slicing samples. And let's store first last name and role of each person in class. So you're going to have a list of three tuples, first name, last name, and role. And let's go ahead and loop through our list of tuples and print out hello, first name, last name is a role. And by role, I'm just thinking like teacher and student.
I should probably make you do a little research to get acquainted, but. Why don't I give you one more specification, which is let's use uh, string formatting to print out our information. And it's worth noting um, my editor helps me by automatically indenting things right. But there's no syntactic requirement to have that list of tuples on multiple lines, there's no syntactic requirement to have this space at the beginning. Right there. But I just have it lined up uh, so that the structure of the data structure is pretty apparent. This is a list of rows, and each line is a row. And it would be, um, it's a little bit confusing to say, OK, when do I have open parentheses, close parentheses, comma, outside the parentheses, all that. If I jam them all together, it would be, um, much more confusing the way it is. It's pretty obvious if I leave off an opening or closing parenthesis or leave off a trailing comma. It's pretty easy to scan. Um, Python also allows you to leave trailing commas in lists and tuples. And a lot of people like to end their list with a trailing comma. Since it just means if you ever go to add an additional line to your data structure, come back to edit it, you start on the next line, and you've already got the comma there. If you start on the next line, half the time you forget the comma if there wasn't one, and the first time through it complains. So everybody has that, that far uh, of their classmates file working, look like? You can store a list of tuples. You're printing out the roles. OK, so let's start making um, our program slightly interactive. Um, and let's change our data types once again. So let's use dicks. So right now you're storing a list of tuples. Let's store a dict for your classmates. And let's key it by the classmate's first name. So the value of the dictionary can continue to be a three tuple if you like. But the key is going to be the first name. And go ahead and get it to print out all the names again. So you're going to have to loop over a dictionary and retrieve the values from the dictionary. And then the next step is we're going to put ourselves in an infinite loop and get some input from the user. And that input is going to be a first name. And if the first name exists, we're going to print it out. So a couple of new concepts to dig into. Uh, meet the built-in function raw input. So you won't use this a ton, but sometimes for quick and dirty scripts, it's useful. Um, raw input takes a string. It prints the string out to standard out, reads from standard in until the user hits the enter key, and returns you whatever the user typed. So I say answer equals raw input. And I noted you typically leave a space. If you don't leave that space, your cursor is blinking right up against the end of your screen. And I'll type something and hit Enter. And answer is the variable that I was storing the return value from raw input. And answer has what it is that I typed. And the other thing we'll introduce here is the idea of an infinite loop. So lots of GUI programming um, and a lot of programming that uses interactivity will frequently have a main event loop. And if you use a GUI toolkit of some kind, It'll usually provide the event loop for you. And you're basically doing event-based programming. In that case, you just respond to certain conditions. I'm not going to be quite that sophisticated here, but we are going to do 
an infinite loop or almost infinite loop. We'll start out with an infinite loop. have an error on line 7. A missing comma? Uh, and that's not related to the present returns. It's just a formatting issue. So if I don't put that space, uh -huh. I take the space out. Uh -huh. It still works exactly the same, but my cursor is kind of right up against. And like, let's say you ended with a question mark. Uh -huh. That looks kind of weird when I answer. So all I was noting is it's a typical formatting thing. Eh, leave a space at the end, or several spaces at the end. So if you notice, I have a never terminating program now. Uh -huh. It's while true, and true never changes. Mm -hmm. It's prompting for input, and whatever I type, it echoes back to me. Slightly interactive. Uh, raw input and your never ending program. I'm using Control C to break, and Control C or Control D will break for you depending on your OS as well. Um, once you have a never ending loop, we'll talk about how to make a slightly nicer exit loop. So this is good. Everybody's trying to define some dictionaries and bumping into several um, edge cases. So your keys have to be quoted. Um, and this is slightly confusing. Some other languages know that your keys are going to be strings, and so they don't force you to put quotes around them. Python will actually let you use a variety of dictionary types for keys. So you do have to specify quotes if you want your keys to be strings. Um, also, As we've discussed, there's two ways to initialize dictionaries. And there's actually more than two ways. Uh, the way we're doing it was with braces. And then it's a key, a colon, and a value of some kind, which in our case is a tuple. Right? That's one way to get a dict. Another way is with the built-in data function dict, which creates elements of type dict. And in this case, you use key. It doesn't have to be quoted because it's actually a parameter to a function. It has to exist. Uh. Which will get you the same thing. The dict function will also take confusingly, lists of two tuples. And it'll use the first, uh, sorry. Item in each tuple as the key, and the second as the value. So you can initialize a dictionary if you have a list of two tuples. And this is actually semi-common for converting back and forth between um, data types. But 
for the moment, stick with curly braces, quoted keys, a colon, and our value. Doesn't matter. You're specifying a string, so you can use single quote, double quote, triple quote. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're specifying string keys. If you leave the quotes off, it needs to be a valid variable, or it needs to be uh, another basic type. So people should be um, maybe on to step two. Most people have got a dictionary stored; they can loop over it and print it. So step two is get input from the user and print out the student record if it exists. And let's um, do a couple things about getting values from dictionaries. Uh, how do I test and see if a first name is a key in my dictionary? OK, so I have an answer that Simeon, I have a dictionary that's badly filled out and doesn't have Simeon in it. How do I tell if that answer is in my dictionary and therefore there's something for me to retrieve? Sweet. So yeah, the in operator works great. And it's false. There's a couple of other uh, methods. If I just directly dereference the dictionary, it'll raise an exception. If the key doesn't exist, it's a key error exception, and we don't know yet how to um, handle exceptions, although we'll get there. Dictionaries provide a convenience method called get. And get functions just like dereferencing does, uh, with a couple of exceptions. One is no exception thrown, and the other is you can provide a default value to be returned instead of none, which is what's returned by default if it doesn't find the key. So you could say if dict get answer, and that's the same thing as saying none is the default. But if for some reason you were interested in some default, for instance, if you wanted to quit whenever the key wasn't found, in this case, my if is successful because it gets back a default value, quit, even though the key wasn't found. Operators, and probably people are guessing and finding out that their guesses work out pretty well. But we talked about the equality operator before. So if the variable on the left-hand side is the same as the variable on the right-hand side in some sense, then it returns true. We didn't talk about the not equals operator, which in Python is the exclamation, the bang equals. And it's false in this case because A really is equal to B. The value of A really is equal to B. And I saw a few people trying, which doesn't actually work. Um, since not is basically just a Boolean inverter. Not requires a single value. Uh, it's not a dual operator. So this statement on line 8, Order of execution is A equal equal B gets evaluated to a single Boolean, which is true. Not true is evaluated, and not true just flips it to false, and it's cast to a Boolean, which it didn't need to be. So not equals is the logical not equals operator. And earlier we were doing less than and greater than operators for numbers, and there's also less than or equal, greater than or equal, just kind of like you'd expect. 
So debugging tools while you're writing your code. Um, there's a module called pretty print, pprint. And it has a function pretty print that will nicely format um, whatever data structure it gets in some probably programmer logical format. In this case, it isn't splitting it up by lines. It's the identical output. Let's try with some longer. OK, so until I get to 80 characters wide, it's not going to split that up into multiple streams. But Pretty Print can accept arguments to say how the formatting should happen. If I really needed less than 80 characters, which you sort of do, you have a narrow console. With a colon at the end. Print X, or print value, sorry. Yeah, print value. And notice that that's printing the keys. So if you want to print the actual values it's stored, you need to print X brackets value. I could have done the uh, same tour on strings that we did on lists, which is look at all the built-in methods on a string type. Um, and there's a bunch of nice formatting uh, methods that'll get you you know, half the way to having to break out regexes. So for instance, just checking to see if it's digits or if it's alphanumeric. There's some things built in like that. Or has spaces. There's lower mm -hmm. and upper, which do what you think they would. X is a lowercase string right now. There's even uh, is it just title? There's title. Title case, which will capitalize the first letter of any word, which is kind of useful. And Yuli right now is checking for um, a particular character, and she doesn't want to check and see if it's uppercase or lowercase. So she can just say, if answer dot lower, that gets you a lowercase string. Bracket 0, that gets you the first character in that string, as long as it is a string, that'll work out. And let's. And it is kind of nice. Most of the um, there's a, a lot of chaining possibilities. Python lets me go ahead and just append the uh, indexing operator right on the end of that function call. Yes. There, so there is no char type in Python. There's only string. A single length string is still a string. 
So yeah, so lists, if we wanted to add something to a list, we could use like append, we could append or insert or whatever. For dicks, Update takes another dict and copies all of its values, which is sometimes useful. But you just want to in add one entry. It's by bracket assignment. So just like I dereference to get the value out, I can dereference to set the value. And if the key is there, it's updated. Yep. Uh, one more data type that's kind of list-like is the set data type. Set does not have its own kind of braces just because we ran out of them. We've got the parentheses for tuples, we've got the square brackets for lists, and we've got the curly braces for dicks. We have no more bracket kind of things on our keyboard. Although, you know, now that I say that, angle brackets are severely underutilized, but then we'd be Perl. Um, so we can only make sets with a set dict. And the set dict accepts a list. What differentiates uh, sets from, uh, what does the name set do for you? Anybody know anything about sets? Doesn't make you think of like you know sixth grade math problems with Venn diagrams and mutually exclusive sets and things like that. So sets, uh, lists. You can store anything you want in a list. It can be heterogeneous objects. You can have a list that's five zeros. A set is a unique list. There's no implied ordering to a set. There's no sense of um, sorting a set. But you can then use set type operations on a set. So. The first time, this looked like we got exactly what we expected. The second time, you'll notice I have a set that accepts a list with a repeating element. And my resulting set only has that element one time. So it's throwing out duplicates in my list when it's constructed. Um, you cannot index into sets because there's no sense of order in sets. Uh, and that's actually kind of inherent to sets as a mathematical property. It's an unordered collection. What you can do with sets are compare sets to do things like the intersection of two sets or what is exclusively in the left or right set. So let's construct ourselves some sets. have two sets. Um, we can use the built-in set functions. And I'm going to do a and dot to see the list of functions I've got here in IPython. And some of these are kind of obvious, like add and clear and copy. Difference accepts another set. And a difference b gives me everything that exists in a that does not exist in b. And I can also shortcut that by using the minus operator to run the difference function on two sets. And notice that difference with sets is not uh, commutative. B minus A gives me everything that's in B that's not in A. The answers are not the same. There's also intersection, which gives me the list of things that's in both sets. Um, and I don't remember if there's a shortcut for intersection. And it doesn't look like it. Um, there's also, oh, actually, there is. That's right.
ampersand, which uh, ampersand by itself in some languages is used for logical ands, um, but more frequently for Boolean ands. In Python, it is only uh, a Boolean and, which is a bit flipping operation that you probably won't have to use very often. It's overridden um, in some end user classes to give you a logical and sense. So it's intersection. There's also a symmetric difference. Anybody want to tell me what symmetric difference did for me? Right, so everything that's not in the intersection of the sets, the stuff that's only in the left one or only in the right one, but nothing that's in both. Um, and that has another bit shifting operation, bit shifting operator overloaded. Uh, in real usage, I rarely use uh, things like symmetric difference. I do sometimes use intersection. What I mostly use sets for is the common um, problem of I have a list, find me the unique elements in the list. You might have read, read in a whole bunch of numbers, and you just want to know how many unique items were there. Four unique items. I convert my list to a set, which throws out all the duplicates. And then I can still take the length of a set, and that's how many unique items I have, the most common use. Um, Along with sets, there's a couple of new built-ins we could talk about. Um, one is one that will give you fits from time to time. I think it's the built-in called zip, and zip has nothing to do with compression. Uh, zip is for transitioning tuples. And what you usually see zip demoed as, I'll give you two, uh, two examples of zip. What you usually hear zip explained as is taking two lists and returning a two tuple with the ith pair from each list. I think that's the explanation that's on python.org. So let's look at that one. OK, so this is what a lot of people will use zip for. I have two lists, A and B. And zip accepts the two lists. And for each position, it returns me the value at that position as a tuple. So I have the first value in my resulting list is a two tuple that has 0 and 6, 0 being the first position in the first list, and 6 being the first position in the second list, and so forth. And you will actually use zip like that uh, occasionally. I think a more intuitive explanation of zip is zip accepts lists that represent rows of data, and it returns a list where each entry represents columns of data. And I actually use it uh, for that quite often. So let's also define C. And if I wanted the first, and if I wanted the second column out of my data, I have a bunch of input rows, and I want the second column. I can say zip A, B, and C, and grab the first position in the resulting row, and that's this column. Seems somehow more intuitive to me. So it throws away the extra elements. Your resulting um, list of columns only has as many columns as the shortest. 
And the iterators package has a couple of additional zip extensions that let you do things like fill in a default value, go to the longest one. So let's go ahead and use zip right away and sets by saving your classmates file as a new file. Classmates 3 would be appropriate. And go ahead and print out all the unique roles in your database as your first order of operation. So you've got a list of people in the room. They all have a role assigned with them. Print out a list of unique roles, no repetition in the roles. Uh, you do not have to change your data format at all for this. Uh, which just means no duplication in your list of roles. So not roles that only have one corresponding, but don't print out a list that says student, 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 instructor. Print a list that says student and instructor, which is a hint that I want you to get a list of all the roles and convert it to a set, which will throw away any duplicates and print out the set. So do people have a clear idea of how it is that they would solve this last little nutcracker? OK, so that's good. I'm trying to make you do something um, so that when we introduce an additional piece of syntax tomorrow, it'll seem like the solution to a problem. And it really does turn out to be the solution to a problem. But let's solve this ourselves together. Um, first, in the slightly awkward way that we have to do it right now. And then we're going to take a break since it's 3 and I've been forgetting. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about functions for a little bit. Um, so data. I have a data structure like everybody else has pretty much right now. Names. It has, it's a dictionary. It's indexed by first name. And it has a three tuple with the first, last name, and role of each student. I want to get a list of the unique roles. So I want to use sets at some point. And since what I want is kind of a column in my data, I'm tempted to use zip to retrieve that column. If I want to use zip, that means I need to retrieve the rows first. And I could do this. Names, Danny, that's a row. That's two rows. And explicitly get the rows. I can just do names values. And that gets the three rows for me. So names is a dict. Dicts have a variety of ways to retrieve their contents. There's keys, which will return a list of keys. Values, which will return a list of values, which in this case happen to be tuples. Items, which returns tuples of key value pairs. Let's use values. And with values, I have the rows that I want. I need to pass them to zip. And the only way I know how to do that right now is let's go ahead and say rows equals names dot values. So there's my rows. Is explicitly specify each list that I'm passing to zip. And zip returns columns, right? So it returns a column that is first names, a column that's last name, ah, and a column I want which is students. So let's get that column. Now I've got a tuple of just, of just the roles. And I could convert that one to a set and back to a list to get a list of unique instructors. That's a lot of functionality packed into one line with way too many parentheses. 
And there's a really ugly kludge in there, which is, how can I do this if I have more rows? Like, I have to pass each row to zip explicitly. What if my list of names had five? And since I'm going to add a name, I don't know how many it has each time. How can I handle that case? We're going to answer that tomorrow. Today, we're going to take a break first, and then we're going to talk about functions. Um, and functions and function handling, Python's very sophisticated function and argument handling is the, the answer to the question. Um, but let's go ahead and take a break. Grab yourself some coffee or snacks. Uh, in case I, nobody else gave you the welcoming speech, have that out there. There's a fridge with juice and you know, sodas and water and whatnot. Feel free. There's some snacks out there. There's still some pastries left from this morning. There's some snacks in bags. Gorp, whatever. So uh, feel free. Thank you.